Okay, why don't we go ahead and begin. Welcome everyone to the SFAA training webinar on doing pre-recorded sessions. My name is Michael Paoliso. I'm the president-elect and a professor at the University of Maryland with a focus on environmental anthropology. I'm a white male. I have brown hair. I have black rim glasses. I'm wearing a flannel shirt. I'm sitting at home in my nice, cozy, warm study with some books in the background. Uh, my pronouns are he and him. I want to thank everyone for coming to the meeting tonight. Uh, we, we hope you find it very useful. Uh, we've got a good turnout. We have approximately 72 plus people registered. This is the third uh, webinar in a series of training webinars we're holding. We held this similar workshop on Monday and had about the same number of participants. Uh, we will be holding some two additional webinars on live streaming. One is on February 25th, Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the other one is on Monday, March 1st at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be sending out some emails and tweets and you can check the SFAA annual meeting website. There's a table there that uh, has all the schedule for all of our training. And you'll also hear more from um, in this webinar about where you can sign up to get sort of personal one-on-one -on -one assistance. Um, let me uh, say a few things about our webinar. Uh, we are recording it. Uh, we're using live transcript closed captioning with Otter AI, and you can see that down on the lower right of your screen. Uh, we will be using the question and answer uh, to have a conversation with you. We ask that you put your questions that you have into that. And then after our presentations as a group, we'll go through them and answer them. Also, you'll notice that your video and microphone are disabled. Uh, that's just so that we can ha handle more people and also protect the webinar a little bit more security wise. Um, I want to just say two things about our annual meeting. We're very excited about it. We have a good program. Uh, at last check, we had over a thousand registrants. We had close to 600 papers and around 200 sessions of a mix of pre recorded and live stream. So we have a full program for you at the annual meeting. We have six days, there'll be five time slots each day. Uh, distinguished lectures, award ceremonies, plenaries, lots of opportunities for networking. And we have a exciting conference software, Whova, that will help you uh, manage your program and participate and network and reach out to people during that. So at this point, what I'd like to do is ask my colleagues on the SFAA meeting working group to introduce themselves. Uh, and the first one I see on my screen is Sherry Briller, uh, who's our, also our president of the SFAA. So Sherry, if you could say a few words about yourself. Okay, great. Just checking that I'm unmiked here. Well, hi everybody, I'm Sherry Briller. As you heard, I'm the current president of the SFAA right now. And I'm super excited about the meeting and the meeting work group and everything that's gone into this. Um, I will give a visual introduction of myself. I'm not actually here as the president of the SFA tonight. I am a substitute presenter. I'll be helping out with the accessibility component of the, of the training. So that's what I'll be doing tonight. So anyway, just so you have a visual description of me, I'm a short middle-aged white woman with a head of dark curly hair and what I think are very nice purple glasses. I am sitting in front of a white wall, just that, undecorated, don't have time to deal with that. Um, and um, like I say, I'm here today um, to really help out with the access accessibility piece of the training, which is an issue near and dear to my heart. I have both personal and professional interest in disability, and we're trying to do everything we can to make our um, first virtual meeting as accessible as possible. Um, I know a lot of you, it's, it's great to see you on the participant list. I use the pronoun she and her, and you should feel free to reach out to me at any time about the meeting or really anything SFA related. 
Welcome. Thank you, Sherry. Melissa. Thanks, Michael. Hi, everyone. I'm Melissa Cope. I'm the annual meeting program administrator. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a white female with light brown hair. And my video is turned off. I have four dogs that you might have heard earlier. <laughs> <laughs> we like them in, the, on, in our webinars. Uh, Kira. Hi everyone, my name is Kira Ballin. I am a young white woman with blonde hair sitting in a small corner of uh, what's come to be my home office. I'm sitting in front of a door as well as a Boilermaker Purdue scarf uh, that's hanging on the wall behind me. Mm -hmm. I recently graduated from Purdue's master program where I focused on the um, educational and professional experiences of early career practitioners. Uh, and I have been lucky to work with the SFAA's meeting work Working group, uh, particularly in implementing the online software uh, of Whova and helping prepare some of these training webinars. Thanks, Kira. Trish. Hi, I'm Trish Colvin. I am the office manager for the Society for Applied Anthropology. So I'm the person you would contact if you have any questions about membership or the website or pretty much most everything non-program related. Um, my pronouns are she and her. I am a, I don't want to say middle-aged, I'm a not quite middle-aged <laughs> white woman with light brown hair and depending on what reading glasses I have on at the time are different colors. <laughs> Great, thank you, Trish. Uh, this is, everyone, this is about half of our meeting working group. We kind of take turns on doing the webinars, uh, but the, I'm really thankful to the meeting group for all the work they've done. They began back in April, May, putting together uh, an online hybrid conference or hybrid, and then we went to online, and we've basically been rebuilding the SFA meeting from an on-site meeting to an online meeting. And, for any of you who have been involved in that, it's an uh, exciting learning experience, but also one with lots of steps and we're constantly discovering new ones. So we're excited to be with you tonight to have this training webinar. And I'm now going to turn it over to Kira, who will start us off. All right. Thanks, Michael. So hi again, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of what we're going to cover in our webinar tonight. So uh, we're going to start with a review of pre-recorded presentations, both some tips for recording them as well as the process for submitting them. I'm going to briefly touch on posters, the same thing, how to create them as well as how to submit them. And I'm going to finish off with um, just briefly touching on some of the features in Whova, specifically for presenters, how you can interact with your session area as well as some er other areas within Whova. Now, everything we're going to cover this evening is going to be accessible on the SFAA website. Uh, this webinar will be recorded as well as the transcript posted. And we currently have a pre-recorded presenter guide that you can access on the SFAA website. I'm going to be referring a lot to that throughout the night uh, as I share my screen. So I just wanted to point out that that is accessible for those who would like to follow along. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and share my screen. All right, uh, so jumping right in, we have our SFAA pre-recorded presenter guide. And for pre-recorded uh, sessions, we have recommended two different softwares, um, which are ideal for pre-recording presentations, especially for people who are uh, less tech savvy or not as comfortable exploring different types of softwares. Um, so we have detailed instructions for PowerPoint and creating audio in addition to your PowerPoint slides. I'm going to walk you through that process uh, right now, and then I'm also going to walk us through the Zoom uh, process. So to start for PowerPoint, I'm going to share a presentation here. And I will note, I am presenting today from a Mac computer. So some of these instructions will differ a little bit in how they look if you are using a Mac or a different uh, processing system. However, the steps are generally the same. And again, we have detailed instructions on the pre-recorded presenter guide, uh, which can walk you through those steps. So here I have a, a sample presentation, something I took from my graduate work uh, for the purposes of this 
presentation. So under the homepage, you have your normal um, sort of tools in PowerPoint. And if you want to record audio to your presentation, you want to head to the slideshow tab. Underneath the slideshow tab, you'll be presented with an option that says record slideshow. So when I go ahead and record the slideshow, you'll see here I'm opened into a new window. Uh, and so it's currently recording the audio that I'm speaking as I click through the slides in my presentation. You know, so for instance, here I might introduce myself, uh, the introduce my presentation title, make some preliminary comments. And then as I click through, uh, you'll see that the recording basically starts over for each slide. So it's timing each slide as I'm going through it and recording the audio on top of it. Uh, you'll note as I click through the presentation, at the very top here, we have a little bar indicating my progress through the presentation. So it's really useful if you're trying to keep your presentation within a certain time slot, say 15 minutes. Uh, I wanna make sure that I'm at my middle of my presentation by seven minutes. Uh, you can sort of keep yourself on track. Um, I have the ability to pause this at any point if I want to pause before I get to a new slide, uh, organize my thoughts, find some notes, things like that. And you'll note when I'm ready to end the uh, presentation recording, it will take me back, excuse me, it will take me back to um, the home screen here. And you'll see on the home screen now we have recorded the timing for each slide. And there should be an audio button here, um, which looks like a little star. And that notes that it's recorded my audio. I think because we're on a Zoom meeting, it's not showing up right now. Um, but you should see the, the narration timing, as well as a little feature here. It looks like a little star, like a shooting star symbol. And that indicates that the audio is um, tied to that slide, basically. So you can go through record your presentation that way. If you say, you know what, I really don't like how I recorded slide number three, it's really easy to go ahead and clear off the narration and the slide timing and just re-record that slide. So here under record slideshow, I have a few other options. The first being clear. So I can clear the timing on the slide and I can clear the, the narration on the slide. Um, in this case, it hasn't saved because we're in the Zoom meeting, but normally it would have saved. So if I clear the timing on the current slide, I want to make sure I'm selected into the slide that I want to re-record. And when I select record slideshow, you'll note here, I started on that slide three, and now it's recording just for that slide. Um, so that's just, if you need to re-record, you don't want to record the entire presentation. It's a really easy tool to edit that presentation as needed. So again, I'll end the show. And we'll see here. Okay, so this is the symbol I was talking about. So this is the symbol you'll see when the audio has recorded properly. Um, and again, you shouldn't have any issues with this. It's just because Zoom is taking my audio. Uh, so now that your presentation has been recorded, what you want to do is download this in an MP4 format. That's a video format. So in Mac, and it's going to be a very similar process for Windows, you want to head to the file bar. And after you've saved your presentation, you want to export it. So we're going to export it to an MP4 file, a video file. Let's see. So you want to find the file of choice where you'd like to set it. For me, I'll go ahead and set it on my desktop. That's fine. And then for the file format, this is where you want to change it to MP4. The MP4 again is that video file. And so when I pull down that MP4, you'll see there's a few different quality options. There's presentation quality, internet quality, and low quality. We want to stick with presentation quality. Down here under timing, we want to make sure use recorded timings and narrations is selected. This basically will take the timings that you've just added to your slides as well as the narration and combine that with your PowerPoint to make a video presentation. So once you go ahead and export it, I'm going to show you what that looks like here. So here I have my presentation title and you'll see here it's an MP4 file. Again, that's a video file. And so when I go ahead and open that up, you'll see here, I'm gonna make this a little smaller, that I have a video that I can play. Uh, now I'm just gonna play a moment of this so you can see what it looks like with the audio and the, um, excuse me, the narr their narration and the slides moving together. Um, it's just an example, it's nothing fancy. So here we go. Hello everyone. My name is Kira, and today I would like to discuss a presentation on field notes and data management. 
On my first slide here, I would like to discuss Duncan Branley's Making and Managing Audio Recordings, where he discusses different types of media and audio tools to use while conducting ethnography in the field. So you can see there the audio uh, is going in tandem with the slides that I've recorded. Uh, it's created here just a minute and 34 presentation and it's downloaded in an MP4 file format. Um, so that is really all it takes to create your presentation in Zoom. Uh, the one drawback is that you don't have a video thumbnail of yourself associated with the PowerPoint presentation. Um, however, this is not a requirement for our meeting. Uh, if this is the software you feel comfortable recording with, that's absolutely fine. Um, it's very easy to use. And so we wanted to show you what that looks like. The other tool that's easy to use, I'm going to switch back here, is Zoom. Uh, now, most of us have been on Zoom for the past year or so. Uh, so we're very familiar with what the software runs like. Um, and if most of us have an account, you'd be able to create your own presentation with relatively few problems. Um, so because we're on a Zoom meeting, I'm not going to be able to show you the instructions step by step as well, but I'm going to give you a quick look at what it might look like. Um, so in our pre-recorded presenter guide, we have this link which shows you how to conduct a local recording in Zoom. I'm just going to show you briefly what this might look like. So once you start your own Zoom meeting, um, and again, if you're presenting by yourself, you won't need to add anyone, you'll just start a Zoom meeting by yourself. There's gonna be a button towards the bottom that looks like that, record, and it gives you two options, record to the cloud or record to your computer. The record to cloud and record to your computer are two options which basically determine where the recording is going to be stored. So the cloud recording is going to be stored in your online Zoom account. So this is the account that you access from an internet browser. Now cloud recordings are saved in the cloud, so it doesn't take as much space on your desktop um, or any files on your computer. If you've chosen to record to the cloud, the recordings will show up in this online browser under the recordings tab and under cloud recordings. The other option is to locally record and locally record would be recording to your actual computer. So under my local recordings, I can see the recordings that I've actually created with Zoom, but they're not accessible within this Zoom uh, online window. Essentially, it tells me where on my computer I've stored that recording. So I wanna show you what that looks like when you download to your computer. So after you've downloaded, or excuse me, after you've recorded your presentation, you are going to be presented with a window that looks like this. Let's see right here. Sorry, let me come back a little bit right here. So after you've ended your meeting, you'll get a window that says your, me your meeting recording is being converted. Essentially, it's being uh, converted from the format of Zoom into the MP4 files and the MP3 files that download. When it's finished uh, converting, it will essentially open up this file. And in this file, you'll have three different types of um, files. You'll have your MP4 file. Again, this is the video file that we need to upload to Whova. You also have an M3U file and an M4A file. One of these is an audio only. The M3U is kind of an audio playback file. Um, but regardless, the only one you really need to pay attention to is the MP4. Now, if I go ahead and open this file, you'll see again, it's a video. Let me see if I can make this a little smaller here. Um, and so this is another just quick example to show you what a Zoom meeting looks like. Hi, all. welcome to my presentation. I'm going to stop recording right now. So <laughs> that was pretty quick. Um, not very, you know, not crazy professional, but as you can see in the recording, I'll come and open it real quick again so you can see what it looks like here. Let me pause it. There we go. So you can see I'm able to share my screen, able to share any presentation materials, whether it's a PowerPoint, a PDF, anything else on my computer. At the same time, I'm getting that video thumbnail in the right corner. So not only are your attendees uh, or people attending your session able to see, able to hear you, they're also able to see you. Um, so if you do have the ability and feel comfortable using Zoom, we recommend it. It's, it's pretty um, easy to use and we are here for extra tips. So. With all of that being said, I just want to review the naming convention um, that we are requesting that files be submitted to us in. So on the program, whoops, I knew I forgot to open something. 
sorry let me go to my history and open up the program it's too many files i knew i'd forget one <laughs> okay so as you'll see with each session, there is a session ID uh, basically associated with the session. So some of our workshops here, 18.1, 18.3, 18.4, and so on. We're requesting that all of the files you submit to us have your session ID along with your last name. So for me, I'm going to look at the session that I'm in, uh, which is going to be PR 26-11. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the name of my file to PR 26-11-Ballon, my last name. I can show you real quick how to do that. Uh, and this is going to look again slightly different on a Mac, um, on a PC. So I'm going to right click on the file and simply select rename. So once I select rename, I can type in my session with a dash and my last name. And there we go. We're good to go, ready to submit that file. Um, all right. I think that's everything for right now. Um, so what I'd like to do is hand it over to Sherry real quick to touch on some of the accessibility um, steps that we're asking presenters to take. Okay, thanks, Kira. Hope, hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, as I indicated, I am the substitute today presenting on accessibility. So excuse me if I look down at the notes a little bit because I don't want to forget what I'm supposed to say here. But basically, you should know that the SFAA has really been looking into having a very accessible virtual meeting. And we've been in conversation with a number of other professional organizations to learn about best practices. And we'd especially like to give a shout out to Nell and the AAA and um, Drig, um, who've helped us a lot with um, thinking about what kinds of features we should have. What we're asking presenters to do is either caption their videos and their instructions for that in the um, in the guide for how to do that for Zoom or for PowerPoint. And if that doesn't work for you, another option is that you could provide us with a transcript. And we're asking that you do that for all of these videos because it's really helpful to anyone who is deaf or hard of hearing or someone who doesn't necessarily process auditory language very well, it's very useful for them to have the transcript to be able to understand all of that content. And we want everybody to have the best chance to um, understand all of the content that we're presenting. So that's why we're asking you to consider doing that. Um, we also are, as we talked about at the top, um, you can use AI captioning options they're definitely getting better if you're following along on the bottom. Even though they're better, there are certain types of words and things that you might say that the AI captioning might not pick up correctly. So we're asking you to please go through after you um, get your presentation together and check that transcript because things like names, proper names, those types of nouns, technical terms, um, those are the kinds of things that are likely not to pick up as well. Some of you already know I am from Brooklyn. I am not the clearest of all speakers and I do need to go back and correct a bunch of things after I do this step. So it's really, it's important to make the transcript and it's also potentially important to fix the transcript so that somebody can actually benefit from what you're doing here. So that's enough about captionings and transcripts for now. You can ask us questions about that. Um, a lot of the standard things, we know the answer. If we don't, we'll try and find out for you. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we're asking people to do for accessibility purposes, and hopefully just for maybe for just for good manners in the future, is to do an accessible introduction. And um, that's what you saw us doing at the beginning, where you're giving a brief um, potentially vis uh, visual description of yourself using whatever terms you're comfortable with so, um, and possibly including your pronouns would be really helpful so that people know who is speaking and for those where this is beneficial that they can see you in um, the mind's eye. So um, that would be really useful if you give a visual description at the beginning. Similarly, if you have um, text on the slides it's really helpful if you read that text. So you see here, there's a series of bullets. So you could read those out loud. Um, someone did ask in the last session, you don't need to read all of your references. That's probably more than 
is necessary and can be handled and done. But if you have just a, you know, a, a sort of manageable amount of text on the slide, it would be really good if you read that text out loud. Additionally, um, let me see, what did I wanna say next? I lost my trail, oh, images. So if you have images on your slides, so if there wasn't a white wall here, if there was a beautiful snow-capped image of the Rocky Mountains, it would be great if you said that. So if there's imagery on your slides, which a lot of times in anthropology presentations there will be, please do describe those images. So again, so that somebody can see in their mind's eye what it is that you're talking about. Um, something, another thing I want to mention is um, a large font that is important, um, least 18 or larger, large is good, and high contrast lettering. So here you see we have a light colored background and dark text. It could be the other way around, but please do have high contrast in your um, presentation slides. And lastly, for obvious reasons, um, something that I'm not especially good at as a fast speaking New Yorker, speak slowly. That would be so fabulous. It would help people understand what you're saying. It would help the AI captioning to keep up with it. And I put this into practice myself. I did a narrated PowerPoint. I believe I spoke twice as slowly as I normally do. And it was a beautiful thing. And even I thought it was understandable. So it's hard to do that because when you're presenting and probably when you're recording your presentation, there can be a lot of adrenaline going. And even if you don't realize it, you might start speaking quicker than you mean to. So for the benefit of having a good recording and for the benefit of the AI and the captioning, please speak much more slowly than you normally would and everything will turn out great. <laughs> Let me see if I forgot to tell you anything. Um, yes, one thing I forgot to tell you. I think Carol will be talking about this in a few minutes, but you're gonna have the opportunity to provide handouts that will be possible for Whova. So you wanna do the same things with your handout that it could have, um, it could have a transcript, that it has a good, um, a good font, good contrast. Um, what else do I wanna tell you about the handouts? Um, another thing to pay attention to is unlike when we're having the live meeting and your presentation might be up on a really big screen in a conference room. Here, people might be looking at it on a very much smaller screen. Like I'm using a, you know, sort of a regular size laptop right now. So that's another reason to think about making your stuff as big as it can be, because it's very possible that someone is seeing it on a smaller screen than we're used to in the traditional presentation format. And I think there were more instructions about this in the presenter guide. I think I'm gonna stop there and either Kira or someone else will cue me if I forgot to tell you about something in this section, but I think that's the basics. Okay. Was, thanks, Sherry. Wonderful. So I'm just gonna bring us back to the presenter guide so you can see where some of those tips are. Uh, so down below here, we have tips for recording, guidelines for creating these accessible introductions that Sherry was mentioning, um, what your visuals might look like, as well as some tools and instructions for captions and transcripts. I also wanted to mention real quick, if you are really tech savvy and you don't want to rely on PowerPoint or Zoom, we've also listed some other presenter software options. Uh, two really quick, I'm just going to show you the websites, uh, Camtasia, which is a screen recorder and video editor. Most of these have free trials which afford about five hours of video recording. Um, so it's enough to sort of get in, play around if you feel comfortable. And they offer quite a bit of customization with your presentation. You can screen record, you can uh, use web camera capture, uh, you can you know, um, use audio recording, simplify certain text. So if you feel up for the challenge, you wanna try something new, we recommend that. Uh, there's also another software here called Panopto. Again, they offer a free trial, give you a little bit more of that modification of your presentation. Uh, finally, if you have any university supported or workplace supported technologies, um, they might afford you licenses to some higher end softwares, including Adobe Premiere Pro, as well as VoiceThread. So again, if you feel comfortable and you want to venture out, um, feel free to do so. Now down for the transcripts. Um, 
transcripts will be uploaded in Whova along with any handouts and supplementary material that you might like to provide. I want to give you a quick look of what this will look like in Whova. Uh, so in Whova, this is sort of what a pre-recorded presentation will look like. I'll come back and explain some of these features, um, but I wanted to show you down below if you if you uh, do provide session transcripts or any handouts or supplementary materials, they are accessible down below your presentation and they are downloadable. Uh, so we have provided instructions for how to add, oops, sorry, so many tabs. Let's see how to add a <laughs> watermark in your Microsoft Word document or in your Microsoft PowerPoint. So a watermark is something that would overlay your text um, and prevent people from sharing it um, letting people know that the information is under copyright. Uh, so if you did want to provide those materials, there is an extra way to keep them, you know, a little bit safer while still allowing for an accessible meeting. Uh, and we have again provided step by steps for both PowerPoint right here and Microsoft Word. I think that's everything on handouts and supplemental materials. So we'll go ahead and discuss submission. Uh, so there's two options for session chairs and pre recorded presenters. Um, the first is to ensure that each presenter in your session records an individual video on their own. So that could be recordings uh, from Zoom, recordings from PowerPoint, whichever software your presenters choose to use. Uh, the second format, uh, which will be a little bit more ideal, would be to schedule a Zoom meeting with all of your presenters and record all of the presentations at one time. This would be beneficial for two reasons. One, you're downloading one video format all at once. Uh, the second one is it gives it a little bit more of a live format feel. Uh, and so members, as they're watching it, instead of seeing a string of videos put together, they're going to see this nice interaction between the session presenters um, and the session chair. Uh, so it's up to you. I know we're all working with a much earlier timeline than we're used to, uh, and we'll accept presentations no matter what. But if you have the ability to do that together, that would be great. A point here as well, if you don't have access to a Zoom account that allows for more than 40 minutes of presenter um, or meeting time, you can email us and we'll go ahead and give you an SFAA meeting link. We just ask that you pick a time and a date that all of you guys can meet up. We'll provide the link, we'll help moderate the session. And then basically that recording will automatically upload to the SFAA's account. So you really don't need to do anything beyond that unless you want to provide some of those additional supplementary materials. So on February 12th, which is next Friday, we are going to send another email out to session chairs and presenters with submission instructions. Uh, essentially, we're going to set up a form on the SFAA website where you can submit these video presentations and any supplementary materials. From there, we're going to take them and get them uploaded into our Whova system. Uh, those materials are due at the end of February, February 28th. So you'll have the ability to upload it as soon as February 12th, uh, but again, you have a few weeks to sort of coordinate with everyone and make sure uh, you can get all those materials in by the end of the month. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to posters now. So poster sessions are going to be hosted in Whova as well as in a website called Adobe Portfolio. So I want to show you what the Adobe Portfolio website will look like real quick. Uh, as you can see, we have student posters, non-student posters, and tourism posters. And I have an example here, um, but you'll note that all of these pages are already set up. So once we receive presenter materials, they'll basically show up just like mine is in the top left corner. Once you click into that presenter area, you'll be able to see the presenter's name, the title of their presentation, and any materials they submitted to us. So basically the poster, and if they choose to do the three to five minute poster presentation, that'll be listed here. Now in terms of Whova, it's gonna look something more like this. So the posters, uh, the poster presenters will each have their own session slot in Whova. The reason they'll have their each dedicated area is so that members can engage with them in question and answer and chat. So each session presenter will have a dedicated space where people can inquire about their presentation and discuss with members more about their uh, work. And so down below, you'll see here, this will be where the abstract for the poster is listed, as well as a link which will take you directly to that poster. Uh, and so that's sort of what the setup is going to look like. 
And now I wanted to show you some of the tools for creating poster presentations. So I'll head back here. So we've listed a variety of tools that you can use for poster presentations. The two most popular are PowerPoint and Canva, uh, which we've provided in-depth instructions for. Um, I'm going to review Canva right now, uh, since most people are probably not as familiar with it. And I'm just going to show you, we have uploaded a video in our presenter guides, which will walk you through step by step how to create your poster in Canva. This is an example of what a completed poster might look like. And we've included recommendations for text size, as well as for image size, so you can create a poster that's going to read well on the website, um, and as well as make it easy for you to create that within this software. Once your poster is finished, you like the way it is, we are requiring or requesting that you download it as a, a PNG or a JPEG file. That is a photo file. Uh, now we're requiring the PNG or the JPEG because of that Adobe portfolio. We cannot accept PDFs for poster files. Um, so again, it has to be the PNG or the JPEG. PNG is going to offer you a little bit higher quality of an image, um, but if the PowerPoint software or another software you're using to create your poster doesn't allow for PNG, JPEG is fine as well. Um, but either way, it just needs to be a photo file. Um, so real quick, I wanted to touch on the poster content. Um, so poster content uh, we recommend that you follow the AAA guidelines for poster content. Um, so, you know, including your name and title, uh, the use of illustrations, any graphs, uh, and including text from your paper, and then headers. Uh, we also are hoping that people might engage in creating accessible copies of their poster presentations by creating an access copy version of their poster. We have linked the AAA's guidelines for doing that. So basically what access copy allows is for a PDF version of the poster. And I know that's a little confusing because I said no PDF, but what's gonna happen is we're gonna upload the PDF right into Whova. So even though your normal poster and your video presentation will be on Adobe portfolio, if you include the uh, PDF version, the accessible copy version, members will actually be able to access it from within Whova. It'll be very similar to that handout space I was showing you with the pre-recorded presentation. Um, so again, you can go ahead and create that. You can add some watermarks to that. We've included the instructions from the AAA's website. Um, and so again, this just helps make our meeting a little bit more accessible. Let's see. Um, okay, I went through poster file format. Um, okay, also you can create a three to five minute poster presentation video. Um, I would recommend using similar softwares to what we mentioned above, either PowerPoint, Zoom, um, whatever is sort of works best for you. The submission deadlines for posters are going to be the same. So again, we're gonna send out links to poster presenters on the 12th, and then they can come into the SFAA website and submit that anytime between the 12th and the 28th. Um, essentially, we want all of our pre-recorded presentations and posters submitted by the end of February because we're going to make Whova open and accessible to members at the beginning of March. And so if members are gonna be in the system checking out presentations, we wanna make sure that yours is complete um, and ready to go before that happens. Okay, <laughs> just keeping myself on track here. So <laughs> I've covered everything for the pre-recorded and the posters. So what I wanted to do was show you some of the areas in Whova where presenters will be able to engage with attendees um, and understand really the full capabilities that you will have as a presenter. So. I'm going to return here to the pre recorded presentation and show you this section. So, as you'll see on the right here, each of the sessions is going to have a QA and a chat area. The QA area and the chat area will be um, presenters will be able to. Um, uh, have notifications for this area. So if attendees ask questions or they engage in chat, members or presenters will receive emails from the Whova system letting them know that someone's engaging in their session. Um, that's important because even though the pre-recorded presentation has a given time slot, members can actually come in and access it before that time slot and after that time slot. Uh, so instead of watching your session like a hawk um, for any period of time, you can just come in and access it when you know people are in here and interacting. The Q&A um, area is very easy. Uh, you have a few different options when engaging in the Q&A. You can pin the question to the top. 
And so when you pin it to the top, you'll get a little pin here. If it's a popular question or one you think is worth having visible for members when they come in, you can go ahead and do that. You can also hide the question from the audience. So you'll see here it goes hidden when I hide it. Um, so if anyone asks something inappropriate or maybe just not relevant to your session, you can go ahead and hide that question. And then you can also mark it as answered. And so once you mark it as answered, there will be two sec sections up here, basically answered questions, unanswered questions. In order to answer the question, you would click into the title here and you can see here, I can type in a response. Um, and so the response is gonna look very similar to just a chat. Um, and so once I go in and have that chat response, I can then mark it as answered. And when people come in, they can see how many replies have actually been given. So if there are multiple presenters on a session, multiple answers can be given. Um, so it's really nice, really interactive. The other area is the chat area. And so you see the chat area looks very much like an iMessage um, or any messages system. And so members will be able to type. And once they type, they'll you'll be able to see their name, pull up their profile, um, chat back with them, have some of that sort of asynchronous conversation. The other area here is the polls area. And so the polls, um, each session is allowed to create up to five polls. Um, and you have a few different options when you create your poll. You can create multiple choice, checkbox, short answer, um, word cloud, different types of polls. And you can also prompt attendees to answer the polls. So when attendees come into your pre-recorded session, if you wanna just ask a question right away or prompt their attention to it, you can go ahead and do that. You also don't have to do that, um, just an option within Hoopa. So those are the main areas within the session that the presenters will really have engagement with attendees. The other area is the community area. Uh, now the community area can be accessed both within your session area as well as in this left main navigation tab. Um, for visual purposes, I'm going to access it through the left tab here so you can get a full um, view of what it looks like. So as we've mentioned in our other training webinars, these channel meetups listed here are reserved for live stream presentations. So pre-recorded sessions, poster sessions don't have an area dedicated for live discussion. If you'd like to create live discussion, you can suggest a meet. And so suggesting a meet is basically a virtual meetup. You can use a Zoom account, you can use a Microsoft Teams account, um, you can use really any other virtual streaming software. And you can really create any topical discussion. You can create a happy hour, a reception of some sort, select your Zoom account, um, add your link in and select a date, a time and a duration for the meeting. Once you go ahead and add that to this area, the, the meetup will show up here along with the other channel meetups. So members we will be able to come in, see what the meetup is all about. If they want to join at the time the meetup is going on, they can do so. Um, and there's also chat associated. So uh, you can have asynchronous chat associated with your meetup. Um, a note about that, because it is a great feature, um, Unfortunately, we won't have moderators available for any meetups that you create. So in our SFAA moderator guide, or excuse me, presenter guide, we have created two quick reference guides and tips for uh, moderating sessions successfully. So both how you can use Zoom effectively as well as tips and tricks for running a smooth meeting. Um, and so just, just a word of caution, um, none of these links will be uh, shareable outside of Whova. So there is, relatively small risk for Zoom bombing. However, we've seen that anything can really happen over the past year. So we just, you know, a word of caution if you do end up going that route. The other thing you can do is add a topic or social group. Now this is going to be something more like an asynchronous conversation. Uh, you'll see here, we have some sample conversation, some photos being shared. Um, so let's say someone wanted to create a topical group for their poster presentation um, or a specific topic, maybe the business TIG wants to uh, create a topic, they can go ahead and do that. All of the members can come in and essentially engage in that uh, asynchronous chat and Q&A area. Uh, okay. I think that's everything for Whova and presenter areas. I wanted to mention also how to create your speaker profile in Whova and what Whova is going to look like from the attendee perspective. And again, these instructions are all on the presenter guide. So here we go. 
In early March, we're going to send out links from the Whova system to set up your speaker profile. The speaker profile is just going to be your information. We're going to set up all of your session information and attach you to your session. This is just going to be the profile that people see when they come into your session. So all it's going to ask for is your name, your email should already be in there, affiliation, job title, biography, as well as a profile picture. This uh, won't give you access to Whova as an attendee. It's essentially just setting up your speaker profile. However, at the beginning of March, we're also going to send out attendee links. And the attendee link um, is going to be very similar to your speaker link, except it's going to give you access to the entire Whova um, platform. So you'll be able to build out your agenda, find your session, uh, start answering some of those questions. Uh, the speaker profile will connect to your attendee profile. So when you come into your attendee profile and create that attendee account, your speaker profile information should be saved. Um, essentially, the difference is the attendee account will give you access to the entire platform. Uh, now, I wanted to point out we have attendee instructions on the website already. So these are instructions for both the desktop Whova app and the mobile Whova app. And there's PDF instructions as well as instructions just listed on the website. Um, now, Whova, I wanted to mention, is free to use. You won't be charged anything to create an account. Uh, essentially, we've already paid for the event, and you can just come in and create your account under our license. Um, we will be providing in that first week of March some one-on-one -on -one assistance for people who need help creating their account, getting familiar with the software, um, navigating some of the different areas. So um, with all of that being said, I wanted to show you um, or share with you some information Oops, sorry. Um, office hours. So uh, a few of us at the SFAA in our meeting working group wanted to provide some more one on one assistance for people who need it. Um, and so both myself and Janelle Marshall will be offering Calendly booking live slots. You can come in and book a 15 minute slot if you have a quick question, you just want to speak with someone one on one. You can also book a longer slot if you're having issues with your presentation um, or questions about Whova and submitting presentation materials. We also have provided emails. So if email is better for you, uh, we would be happy to answer your questions over email. Finally, Rebecca Eli Long, who was not able to be with us tonight, is uh, available for any accessibility questions. So if you're having questions creating your presentations in an accessible manner or questions about Whova's accessibility, you can direct them towards them. And finally, I just want to finish with our other training dates. We're going to be providing some live stream training on Thursday 225 and Monday 31. So if you have a live presentation, we're going to do something very similar to this. And we're also going to be providing a live stream presenter guide on the website. And the first week of March, first, second week of March, we're going to be providing moderator training. So if you are a moderator for webinars, we're going to walk you through how to moderate those sessions, how to keep our meeting meeting safe. Um, technologically working um, and enjoyable for everyone. And then as I mentioned, after we make Whova available to everyone, we'll be offering some individual and small group training. Um, if you're having trouble setting up your account or you just have some questions, uh, would like someone to walk you through it. So um, I know that was a lot of information. All of this information, uh, most of this information is on the website. We'll also be sending out information with our newsletter coming up, as well as an email um, with some of these contact information and training dates. So, um, you know, we're here and we want to be accessible to you as this is a new meeting format for all of us. And, uh, and I'll end there. <laughs> I've talked enough for the night, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Here, I'd just like to say thank, well, thank you very much both to you and Sherry. Um, before we move on to the question and answers, uh, you on that last slide, you showed the moderator training. And I just wanted to say to those on the call that each of our live stream sessions and our Whova meetups will have a moderator to help with technical and security issues. We are in the process of recruiting moderators from our membership. So <laughs> Gary puts her thumb up there, yes. So um, the TIGs and our co-sponsors have been um, asking their members to to um, volunteer as moderators, and we've had a good response. We are still in need of people to moderate one or two sessions. So if anyone is out there be interested in sitting in on a session that they like and maybe also moderating, uh, that could help us a lot. And if you are, uh, you could just email me or Kira or the, the technical coordinator um, 
email address, but uh, that would help us out a lot. All right, I guess I will go ahead and walk through some of the questions that we have gotten so far. Uh, if you have any further questions, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A. Uh, so our first question is, what format do we use for the transcript of our talk? That's a great question. Um, I would recommend using one of the softwares we've recommended, which is Otter. I think the other one was Amara. And typically those will download as either a Word document or a PDF file. Both of those can be uploaded into Whova. Um, so as long as it's sort of a Word document type of format, we'll, we won't have a problem uploading that. Um, and let me know if I need to clarify that at all. Um, okay, next questions. How do you activate activate the AI transcription system in Zoom? And can you edit the Zoom recording while you are taping it? Um, for the second question, I am not 100% sure about editing the Zoom recording while taping it. Um, I'll do some research and I can try and create an answer. We're gonna create a little FAQ document um, of frequently asked questions. So I'll add to that and see if we can get an answer. And then activating the AI transcription um, Melissa or Trish? I, I can answer that. Okay, great. Yeah, so basically at the bottom in your tray on Zoom, you'll see that there's a button that says live transcript. And if you click on that, um, there's a feature that says enable or disable live transcript. And you can just test it with your mic on. You can say test, test, and you can, you'll be off to the races. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so let's see. Someone said 18 point font is too small. Nell recommends 28 or 32 and no more than six lines per slide. I will double check where we had 18 point font listed and go ahead and get that changed. Yeah, I think it might, I can answer, respond to this. I think it's a typo. Um, basically, if you wanna see, there's a question coming up later about what accessible stuff looks like. And you'll see, we did direct you to some, um, some links that AAA um, has up because they do have some samples there that you can look at. And since this is our first time doing it, it would be good to look at those samples if you wanna see. Great. All right, so another question, is there a standard? Oh. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry, Kira, I think I'm supposed to answer this as well. This is, um, I told you I would answer this. This is one about, it says, is there a standard of the length or level of detail on describing an image? This is what we talked about, having an accessible image description. And the person, my colleague actually um, asking this question says, I will be showing various slides that are screenshots of an M Health app. Is a five second overview sufficient one could easily spend much longer if I got into all the details of what's on the slide. This is a really good question. So the answer to this is you want to, as a baseline, minimally talk about what's on the image. Here's the image that's up. Here's what you're seeing, you know, literally like through the lens of a camera. However, if it's relevant to your presentation, if it's about a telehealth appointment and you need to describe some of the features that the people are engaging with and what they see on their keyboard or what they see on their screen, you may wanna go longer. So it's dependent on context. Minimally, you wanna give the baseline, but you may wanna describe specific features and details that are important. It could be different in a tourism session. It could be details about the weather. It could be about signage. So each presenter will decide what's really important but imagine if someone is, have, is relying on that description for the image, what they might need to know from you if they wanna see it as you're seeing it, as you're recording the image description. Okay, um, another question. Is there somewhere you recommend to see an example of accessible presentations with descriptions throughout? So I guess um, I can answer that since I'm here. Um, basically, it's the same thing. I would say if you want to see some stuff that's already up there as a best practice, we do refer you. Nell put some good stuff up there at AAA. That will help. We can also look at things for you if you're not sure whether it's achieving your purpose. We just asked to have it in enough time that we can interact with you and help so we're not doing it all bunched together at the last minute. But we can help with that. Okay, it, it looks like that's all the questions. Um, you can wait a few minutes if anyone has anything else that might pop up. 
While we're waiting, I'll say again, thanks to the presenters. Uh, Kira, you've really done a lot on this session and in the other. Uh, we'll have to give you a break from some of these in the future. Um, <laughs> One thing I've learned from these, these two training webinars on pre-recorded and in the sessions that I'm in, we've already started talking about how we're going to do it, whether through Zoom or whether through uh, PowerPoint or Panopta and, and combine them. So it's, I found it really helpful in a sense that it, I've never thought about my presentation for SFAA this early. And um, and the more that I, I learn and the more that I explore it, the more I discover that there are lots, there are new things uh, with it that allow me to do things that I didn't know about. So I have per gone back and forth between pre recorded and live in my mind about which one I prefer or whatever. And I've come to the conclusion that both of them have lots of, of benefits on the pre recorded, that you can have your pre recorded up there the entire conference. People can email you, chat with you to get in touch with you. You can have a conversation. Um, you can really extend the time that people can see your meeting. We'll be recording the live stream, but it'll take a little time to get it up there. Um, and you can get close to having somewhat of a, not a live discussion, but you can have a lot more back and forth than I would have thought. So uh, mm -hmm. I encourage everyone to um, start early and explore these options and doing it and let us know your questions. Uh, the team and Kira and Rebecca, Eli and Melissa and others, I mean, they're, they're very, very responsive and um, have learned a lot and, and are willing to help out. So um, if we do that early and engage with it, I think we can have a, a much, a very successful conference. And I see another question. Yeah, so uh, someone asked, to clarify, we record our panel session first, upload the recording, and then on the actual day, the chair is gonna moderate the sessions recorded. Um, so unfortunately, it's it's not gonna work quite like that. If presenters decide to record their presentations separately, uh, we're essentially just going to string those videos together. So the session chair is not going to be like live in that session providing transition so much, which is why we've sort of recommended the Zoom um, presentation recording format. You can all get together. It can flow a little bit more like a traditional presentation. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that answers the question. I do, and I want to second what Kira's saying about using Zoom for the pre-recorded. In our session, we've made the decision to do use Zoom and it is true now we need to do our session next week or something like that. But on the other hand, it feels more like we're in a, a live session doing it through Zoom on screen, just like this. And um, so I, that I, I vote for Zoom. And it's easier also for, for the SFA in terms of we don't have to combine your files afterwards, although we're willing to do that. Are there... Any more questions? Looks. Um, the last thing I wanted to do real quick, which I realized we didn't, I will be dropping the office hours contact information in the chat. Uh, and so this information again, will also be going out in our newsletter as well as an email. Um, but just so you have the information if you'd like to book sessions or email us. Well, if there are no more questions, um, thanks to everyone for participating tonight. Uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, at our virtual meeting in later March. It'll be here before we know it. So um, good luck getting your presentations ready. Let us know your questions and uh, stay safe. And thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.